now back to Let's Chat with Tita Gracie, only here on V81 Radio. Welcome everybody to Let's Chat with Tita Gracie. And Vicky, those fruit sorbets look delicious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they're really nice and light and healthy. So the, yeah, the, and it, it's dinner. I think I like the variety. You've got uh, melon, strawberry, buko, and honeydew and mango. mango yeah, I just want to favorite. Color. Yeah, those are my favorite summer fruits, mm -hmm. and I like the fact that you had buko there. Mm -hmm. It's so uh, I remember in my childhood years. One of my favorites was buko sherbet yeah. from Milky Way. Yeah. Well, my son loves coconut, and I like coconut also. So that's why I, yeah. have, to, so, why I have to include that. Yeah, and, and that's, that is one of the – that definitely I will try to make. So you just grate the coconut, and you – do you cook it uh, – you said you mix it with gata or – Yeah, just – um. Because uh, down the street there's a there's an empty lot where there's they sell coconuts. You know you the, the young buko, diba? So there's they already separate the juice and then they scrape out the meat. So you're just yes. going to put on, um, let's say one buko, its meat and the juice with a can of uh, of coconut milk or cream that you just buy in the store, and then maybe yes. about a cup of sugar. And then you just blend that until the sugar is dissolved, and then the same process. Yeah. Is there is, is there a recipe for that without the coconut cream? You can or do it without the coconut, coconut cream, and then it's water? like sugar. Yeah. No, you just, if, if uh, all buko juice. It should be just all buko juice, because that's where all the buko juice comes from. Yeah, but and I wanted, just, something, yeah, I wanted something white and creamy looking, which is why I added the, the coconut milk. Aside from the fact that I love the flavor, I love the flavor of kata. And you yes. can buy sand or you can buy powdered, so it's not it's not difficult. You don't have to get it, um, you know, fresh from the wet market. It's convenient. Yeah, that's I, I will definitely make that buko because I miss having a good buko sherbet. Yeah. And when I saw you make that variant, I immediately... You know, I was salivating, and I'm definitely going to make that buko. So it's just shredded buko with the coconut water and, mm -hmm. and, a, and a bit of sugar. Bit. Yeah, a little, little bit. If, in fact, if it doesn't have if it doesn't have the coconut milk, then the sugar is very minimal. If yeah. At all, because yes. it might already be sweet. You know, you might not even need to add anything. Yeah, but the technique there is not to let it set. You put it in a metal container, like, like a little, uh, like a banana a pan. Tray. Yes, or a loaf pan. Yeah. yeah, and then you have to just keep on breaking up the ice crystals so they get finer every time you scrape. So you don't have like you know solid big solid chunks of ice there. So it gets yes, finer yes. and finer with every with every scraping. Yeah, that's that's the interesting technique there, yeah. and the thing is, when you can you, 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 yeah, it's a great idea. And you know, I know that if you if I know that people used to have a lot of those metal ice cube pans, but if you don't have that, you can use a banana loaf pan or a brownie pan, uh, you know, mm -hmm. to make square brownies, yeah. or you can even use your leche flan. Yes, yes, Ovals? Ovals? flan molds. The flan yeah. Yes, anything metal because it makes it faster. Right, right. Now, uh, you had you tried it with melon, which is yummy, buko, mango, strawberries, and honeydew. Now, if uh, if the let's say you they want to try it with something more, you know, like uh, lychee, will that work? Like yeah. a can? I was thinking of. I was thinking of doing like. Can just can lychee by itself, or combining it with buko. But yeah, just the lychee because the, the syrup uh, is already sweet. So um, I would just slice up the fruit and then do the same thing. I was I was considering that if I, if I wasn't able to get hold of any melon, then that was gonna, that was going to be one of my options. Yeah, um, because uh, just just so that there will be. Uh, that the problem right now is some people may not have access to a fruit mart. I know that you, 
if you go to the wet market, there's a good variety. But some people are are, are reliant on the supermarkets. And like here in my area, some of the supermarkets, the fruit selection is very limited. Yeah. But luckily, they what they have now a lot of is watermelon. Yes. Yeah, it works very well with watermelon too. And then yeah, you, would have had the red, you would have had the red color there, but I already have my strawberries. Yes, so, of course. I'm going for the orange. I'm going for the orange, and I'm going for the green. Yeah, and the watermelon is is you know once you blend it, uh, it's it's already a lot. I have a lot. It has a lot of liquid content, mm -hmm. and you don't have to put any more sugar and water. Yeah. yeah. It freezes and it sets. Yeah. Nicely, and it will be very easy to scrape up, like you know, in your bay. Yeah. Great. And so also, really cool. yeah, I think I think watermelon looks would be would yeah. go really well with no, the shirt. No, definitely. If you have if you have uh, young people in your house like me with my I have two teenage daughters and my son is twenty one. You know that's the that's the next trending thing after this Dalgona craze. You know, for I the first few weeks of, of the of, of the lockdown, I was making like all these Milo Dalgona, Oreo Dalgona, strawberry Dalgona. But now with that we have all those surveys, at least, you know, my, my mixer has uh, is taking a little bit of a break. But it's making them happy. So that's 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 good, you know. Yes. I know because that the that's the Dal, the Dalgona coffee craze for a while there. It, every day I open my Facebook and someone's uploading a picture of a Dalgona coffee they made at home. So so people out there, this is a nice refreshing alternative to Dalgona coffee. As Vicky said, this is trending fruit survey. Fresh mm -hmm. tropical fruits are abundant. She used melons. Um, Strawberries, buko, mango, and honeydew. Now, with the honeydew, your tip there is to put a little sweetener, right? Um, it depends. The, the 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 honeydew that I bought when I opened it and tried it, it wasn't as sweet as my cantaloupe. That's why I added the lemon and the honey. If my cantaloupe had been not as sweet, I would have done the same there. Yeah, so, yeah, it's a bit of hit and miss. Honeydew, yeah. I love. It. It, yeah, but sometimes it's not uh, sweet. Yeah, if it lacks flavor, then you the lemon will give it some flavor, and then the honey will give it the sweetness. So yeah, yeah. Now, um, so I know that um, uh, summer uh, with with the, the fr nice pasta dish with the great sorbet uh, dish, and of course the comf the cor the comfort that an Oreo cookie, a red velvet fried Oreo cookie brings. You know, um, I'm sure it's going to bring a lot of smiles to many homes. I know that people are going to take note of those recipes. Now, if anyone out there wants to revisit the show tonight, later on after the show, you can log on to my Facebook fan page. Let's just search for Let's Chat with Tita Gracie. And the entire episode will be uh, uh, put there by, uh, you know, give it 30 minutes. It will be up there. There will be a link. And you can revisit all those fantastic and easy to cook comfort food recipes brought to you by none other than Vicky Veloso Barrera. And should you be interested in any of our books, we're going to run down those books very quickly now. Um, so, Vicky, let's run them down quickly. The two tiny kitchen books are Tiny okay. Kitchen and yeah. Not Too Tiny yeah. Kitchen, right? Those ones, those ones are already out of print, no? What? What okay. they're selling in national bookstore is the uh, edible gifts. Uh, I think some of the some branches still have a worldwide feast and celebrations, which is our heirloom recipes of the Rosas Reyes clan. So it's like four generations of recipes here. My grand my mother's recipes, my grandmother's, you know, the whole clan. So it's 60 recipes um, uh, that that really show like Philippine culture and also um, there are recipes for, our, for kids, recipes from abroad, because some members of our clan have gone abroad and our chefs there. So uh, there's this one, From the Kitchen to the Heart, which is a, a cookbook for children published by OMF Literature. So it has some Christian content. It's based on the fruit of the spirit. So the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, 
kindness, uh, gentleness, and self-control. So there's like a little story for each virtue. There's a little children's story, and then there's a, a recipe to illustrate it. And then you'll see my kids in it because you know they're the ones. Wonderful. And then of course my my books for children. So I've got uh, my my sign of the rabbit series. There's three about book one, two, and three. And you know, it, even if this is not an adventure book for children, it's an it's a it's it's um, an allegory of the Christian faith. So very similar in concept to let's say like Narnia, but the story is completely different in it. The rabbits are good and they're trying to save the world from the rats who are bad and trying to destroy the world. But I can't write a book for kids and not have maski papa, no? At the end of it, recipes. Yes. So the food of the characters, they're, the recipes are there at the back of each book. So these ones are carried by Big Bad Wolf. Uh, we sell them here in the school and then you can PM me and you can send it over so my rabbit books and then i have other children's books that we also sell here so national uh Vibal publishing that's children's books i've got these a book of essays that even has like the cover work done by carlos the late carlos or john i have a lot of books this is i think this yes. is my number one love this is this is yes. my number one love and actually the the, the cooking is the cooking is even second, but a close second, and the teaching, and the fashion is already yes. number like number four. <laughs> no, but like you know, um, the I, I love the idea that you you uh, found uh, a way to weave together uh, the the your, you know Christian Christian themed cookbook. That's I think that's wonderful, and also the idea that. Um, uh, a, a, a series like the, the, the your rabbit books share uh, Christian values as well as at the end recipes. So yeah. there's always the treat. There's a treat. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're finding if you if you're looking for some fantastic cookbooks and a great set of reads, why don't you check out? Uh, Vicky's website, because I think the list of books are there. Mm -hmm. And a flash, the website now, it's tiny www.tinykitchen.com.ph. That's her official website. And uh, you will find a lot of information about the cooking classes, the cookbooks, and you'll get more about Vicky Veloso Barrera and her exciting journey into culinary arts and homemaking. And if they have any questions, do you, you know, do you entertain like questions about cooking, cookbooks? Yeah. They can do you have a yeah, especially uh, for, if they can go to any of my Facebook pages. I have a Facebook page for Tiny Kitchen. I also have a Facebook page for my books. So there is a Facebook page called The Sign of the Rabbit. And also Tiny Planet Books, which is my the, my imprint for my children's books. So they yes. can ask questions there about the books, uh, about about um, about the recipes. They can request recipes from me, even if they're not my students. Um, yes. And I think that um, that we've opened up a lot of uh, avenues of interest uh, mm -hmm. and uh, to many people out there parents who want to introduce their children to cooking women and men who are starting their own homes condo dwellers you know young professionals that may need some tips on a startup kitchen and uh starter couples that are you know beginning their lives together and and their vicky has a book that will give you a great idea how to plan your meals, how to budget, how to enjoy the journey based on her own experience as a, a young woman when she was starting out with her with her then uh, young husband, Roberto, who's a fantastic gentleman. And of course, as she was raising her family alongside 
her um, great project, which is Tiny Kitchen. Um, Vicky, quick, I just want to you know, uh, advise to those three uh, segments of our viewers, to the parents that want to introduce their children to cooking. Um, yeah, you can pick out simple re recipes and uh, just what make age? What age should they start? Um, I, in my school, I take three-year-olds. I mean, I, I want really? to start. Yeah, I th I wanted to start when I was two year old, so I think three is okay. And I've I've taught a lot of three year olds. Um, yeah, you just even earlier for the nursery. Yes, yeah. Um, my wow. advice: you you let them help help you pick what to cook, and let them do as much as they can. Let them be the one to do whatever they can, instead of you trying to do it for them. You know, during my classes. We don't allow the yayas and parents into the kitchen because we want, you know, the kids to do it themselves, and they will, they will if if, if allowed to, and they have more fun that way. So yeah, I would encourage them to 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 start introducing them to cooking early. Also, if they are not interested, don't yes. cook because not all kids will want to cook. Some kids will never have an interest for it. So if they are interested, well and good. And if they're not, you know, that's, it's not, it's not a problem. I mean, God has given each of us different gifts. You can see as you even outlined, you know, you said I wove everything together, but actually I didn't. I mean, it was God who wove everything. He put me in a family, of course. had passion and food and teaching and you know it uh, it all it all came together and i'm still continuing that i mean he's the one who's put me here and so i feel like i'm you know that that the place you know the bible says that the boundary lines for us fall in pleasant places and so i think all of us have our perfect place if we're in tune with, with god because he really does um find the perfect thing for each of us. He gifts us with the things that will give, bring us fulfillment and which would make us useful to other people. So really it's him and we just need to trust him and yes. we don't to be anxious at this time because yes. the reason there are, it, I know everything looks bad now, but you know, because of this, um, things are going to improve. We're finding out what's wrong in the way we do things, what's wrong, you know, with all this crowded travel, too many people on the streets, or, you know, the, uh, lacking infrastructure, hospitals, those things are coming up so they can be addressed. So, you know, yes. the Bible says God um, makes all things work to the good. So of all of who this, love him. Yeah, so all of this is going to work out so we don't really have to be anxious. I might look like this, but I have the same problems as everyone else. I had no income this summer and I have obligations, but I'm trusting him. Yes. So. Wonderful. Now, uh, what's your advice to the young girl, young girl or young man who is starting out on their own, condo dwellers in BGC and in Makati, who are beginning to start their lives? Any advice on how to uh, have a, a, a great time in the kitchen? Okay, first of all, if, especially if you live in a condo and have very limited space, try to, to maximize your kitchen space by not having unnecessary equipment there. For me, if you, you just need the most basic, basic things. If you, you don't even really need an oven if you have like a stovetop range and even at those toaster oven now that can already like bake cookies, they don't take up space. You don't need any fancy equipment. You need a few nonstick pans. You need a, a, a couple of uh, saucepans for boiling water, making sauce. Um, the, the equipment, you can even just um, stick to like wooden spoons because wooden spoons, aside being good for like mixing batters, cake doughs, etc., are very good on nonstick pans because they won't scratch up your, 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 your pans. And... Um, the less equipment you have, for me, the better. Because in a kitchen, the most, the most uh, important uh, commodity is counter space. You need space yes. to do your work. If it's cluttered with this this grinder, this this thing, and uh, you know that you only use like once in a blue moon, if at all, then yes. it's gonna be hard. But if you if you can do all, if you have a good 
if you've got a chopping board, you can do practically everything. Yeah. One or two mixing True. Bowls, one measuring, one or two measuring cups and measuring spoons. You don't need a lot. You don't need a lot of stuff. And then later on, you can add what you think is really necessary. But um, really, if you can just maintain as much counter space as you can, it's better. And um, yes. I try, I try not to be dependent on machines. I don't let my kids, my, my students work with like uh, the food processor, the mixer, until you know, until they know how to do things by hand. They cannot use the dough yeah. until they know how to, to knead the dough by hand. They cannot use the food processor for pie crust until they know how to do it by hand. So you're not dependent on machines. You're not dependent on having electricity. So the less, the less clutter, the better. Yes. Yeah. I agree. I remember when I first studied how to cook, no no machines. As in, we had to cut the paste, the butter, and the flour to make our, our pie crust and then get our hands dirty to make the, the basic dough for the pasta. We didn't yeah. even have a pasta machine. We used uh, yeah, a, a, rolling bin, a rolling bin and just we kept on doing it as flat and, you know, I put more flour and then make it flat and and it was so much fun and and um and, and, and that's that's the that's the beauty of it get your hands into the food you know um and, and really prepare it from scratch get the freshest ingredients that you can possibly get and start on your culinary adventure in your own tiny kitchen so, friends, you know, Vicky truly um, is a gem when it comes to culinary, uh, to starting your culinary journey with her books, with her school, and today with our chatting. I mean, it's so lovely to have you on the show, Vicky. Oh, and I think, you know, we have some, we've got some comments. Some people were uh, typing in comments, so, uh, you know, they're going to be flashing in a, in a while. Oh, look. Mary Grace Antonio says, hi, Vicky. Good to see you. Congrats, Gracie. So shout out to our dear Mary Grace Antonio. Uh, we've got Maria Nakajima. Hi, Konbanwa, watching from Japan. So wow, one of my favorite places. And then I uh, love your show, Tita Gracie, and love how Vicky talks and how she has reinvented herself from fashion to another creative industry. So that's Rachel Bonus Pestano. And oh, of course. Hey Raleigh. We I hope that you picked up some great tips today. That that's uh he's our uh, vice president for marketing and programming. He's in a condo, he's alone. So all I'm saying is Raleigh, you're quarantined. So tomorrow go and get some Oreo cookies. Make yourself some great fried Oreos and do the pasta with tinapa or uh, tuna if you cannot find tinapa because they're great uh, recipes that you can whip up for yourself. And Vicky, I'd like to thank you so very much. Oh, thank you for having me. I enjoyed this. Sharing your books, your videos, and I hope to see more videos. Do you plan to post more videos like on YouTube right. or we have I have a YouTube uh, channel. It's called Vicky Barrera's Tiny Kitchen. So you can look at that. And um, I actually had a TV show called Tiny Kitchen, the Tiny Kitchen TV oh. show. And it's also yeah. on YouTube. So you can look at you can look at that for more ideas uh, for with kids. Yes, uh, especially now that everybody, uh, you don't all your classes have been suspended because yeah, of the suspended. Right? Yeah, when 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 it's possible, then we will resume. Um, we will just have to do things differently. Um, well, we were not in the kitchen because, of course, we're not super duper crowded. But we will be having even smaller smaller classes than before, and yeah, so we have to adjust. Yeah, and I think uh, trying to ca catch your videos will be great because everybody's doing digital. Uh, programming these days and it's been a blessing to me to, to share what's in my heart and what's in my mind with with my audience with let's chat with tita gracie and i hope vicky that we'll find another time to invite you on the show again yeah, yeah, of 
course, anytime, anytime. Yes, fabulous. So, friends, ladies and gentlemen, that was Vicky Veloso Barrera, a fantastic cook, a great author, a best selling author. And she is, like I said, everybody's favorite cooking teacher here in Manila. So, if you want your kids to study cooking, like she said, as early as three years old, you can already begin if they're showing some interest in cooking. You can contact her. There's her website, www.tinykitchen.com. And she also has a YouTube channel and a Facebook page. So you can please access or just search for her on the, on the internet. She's very easily accessible. And uh, do you have any parting message to our audience, Vicky? Uh, to stay safe and not to worry. Yeah, not to worry and... Not to be, not to be anxious because you know God is looking out for us. You just, have, just you know, even if everything is dark, uh, He knows where we're going. He's He'll bring us to a good place. We just have to trust Him. So, uh, just keep crying out to God every time you're you're worried about something because He really is so 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 good. I have been through like ups and downs in my life and. and there has never been a situation where he has not helped He's a wonderful guy. So, yeah. And to to add to that fantastic message, Vicky, I would like to close the show with one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely. Whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Friends, during this time of pandemic and ECQ, I know that a lot of you there are stressing out and are anxious as Vicky said don't be anxious instead pray about it and let's just thank God that we are alive and safe in our homes and in that last verse from the book of Philippians that I shared it's a choice to fill your mind with the beautiful things that God has given us whatever is giving you joy happiness uh, the people you love, the blessings you receive, the bluer skies that we're all experiencing because there's less pollution, the food on our table, they're all blessings from God. So think about these beautiful things. It's a mindset. And I wish that uh, after viewing this show, you have uh, gained some new insights into how food can bring smiles to your face and to the faces of your families. Food brings comfort to all of us. Food nourishes our bodies. Food gives us uh, the sustenance we live. It boosts our immunity system. And as you know, one of the ways to fight off COVID-19 is to have a nutritious and balanced diet. And uh, we're lucky we live in a country where abundance there is an abundance of fruits and vegetables and we have a choice to include them in our diet every single day it's a blessing to have someone like vicky share her insights on comfort food and uh, she shared some fantastic recipes with us today so in the coming days be bold try them go to the supermarket and try them in the next few days and I hope that we are able to put smiles on all your faces with tonight's show. This has been Tita Gracie Venezuela bidding you farewell and see you on Sunday for another episode of Let's Chat with Tita Gracie. Thank you and have a good evening. Leading personalities represented.
Insights, relevant current issues all together in a meaningful and delightful conversations as your social barometer. Let's chat with Tita Gracie. Let's chat with Tita Gracie. Sundays, 6 p.m. Hosted by Breakthrough Millennial Boomer Gracie Venezuela. Let's chat with Tita Gracie. Only here on V81 Radio. Tunog Pinoy, Tatap Pinoy The Future of Radio This is your All Hits, All Pinoy Internet Radio Station This is V81 Radio Worldwide Ito ang paborito ng bawat Pilipino Basta All Hits, All Pinoy 